All right, welcome to part two of the outlines tutorial. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do here is we're actually going to undo the changes we did to the post-process volume. So search for the blend, uh, I forget what it's called, post-process materials, and just hit this little trash can to get rid of this. You can see it gets rid of our outline here. And the reason we're doing this is because I wanna add this post-process effect to the player and not the level. And so like I was saying before, that way if we switch levels or we add more levels, we don't have to keep doing this every single time. So open up your character blueprint. I'm gonna have to find it here. I think it's inside here. Yeah, the third person character blueprint. And instead of adding it to the world, we wanna to add it to our player. So we'll hit add and we'll search for post-process and add a post-process component. And then with this selected in the details panel, search for the post process materials and hit this little drop down and hit the plus and then we want to choose an asset reference and make sure you get the mi for material instance outlines because that one has all of our customizations in it and then save compile now you'll notice if you go back to your scene this box doesn't have the outline around it because we're in the editor and we're just flying around but if we were to start the game and look at the box it now has the outline around it so if you, if you are experimenting with this material and maybe you're making changes to it, I just find it's a lot easier to work with if you have it set up the way we did before where the, the outlines can be seen in the editor so you don't have to play the game to look at your changes. But I think once you have the material set up correctly, it's a lot better to do it this way. So that way, like I said, when you switch levels, you don't have to keep adding the post-process material to your scene every time. It'll just work because it's part of the player itself. All right, and then the final thing we wanna do here is get this set up so that we can have different colors for teammates, first enemies, first objectives. Um, so to do that, um, we're gonna do that in the begin play here. So right click and say begin play. And the first thing we want to do is check whether or not we have authority because we want to assign a team to our character. I'm not gonna do anything crazy, like a character select screen where you can choose your team and all that jazz. Um, I'm just gonna set up a basic team system here so that each player is on its own respective team. Team, And then from there, if you wanna you know, have a more elegant way to choose your team, you can do that and then this code will still work. So we're just gonna do it, we're just gonna keep it really simple. We're gonna do, first of all, an authority check to make sure we're on the server because the server should obviously be the one that is setting the, the people's team. And then we're gonna add a little variable over here. We're just gonna call it the team index. And we're gonna make this a integer value. And we want to change it to rep notify. So that way when it gets replicated, it will call this function here for us. If you don't know anything about replication, this part's gonna be a little confusing. Um, it, it's gonna be pretty quick, but I do have a tutorial on replication. If you wanna search my channel for it, it covers replication pretty well. Um, so you can go ahead and check it out afterwards. But for now, all we wanna do is we wanna take this and we wanna set it if we're on the server. And the way we're gonna do it is we're just gonna say um, the first person is on team one, the second person is on team two, the third person's on one, two, one, two. We're just gonna alternate back and forth. Um, so if you have six players, you'll have three people on one team and three people on the other team, right? So to do that, we can look at the player array, which is inside of the game state. So we can say get uh, game state. And we wanna look at the player array. This is basically an array of all the player states that are in the game. So if there's four people connected, there's gonna be four items in this array. And we can use that to um, figure out which team they should be on. So we can use the length to get the size of it or the number of elements in the array. And then we can use the mod operator. And this will, we wanna mod by two. So this is gonna either return to us a value between, or it's gonna to return to us a value of zero or a value of one. If you don't know what the modulus operator does, um, you can just Google it. It's very simple if you just read it on Wikipedia, but it basically just returns to you the remainder of a division. So if you mod something by two, you're either gonna get zero or one every time. And so we're gonna either set the team index to zero or one. So those are our two teams. And then by default, we wanna select the team index over here and make sure you compile. And then we can change the team index by default to negative one. So negative one essentially means they haven't been assigned a team yet. 
Okay, so the server is going to do this. It's going to assign them a team of either zero or one. And then once it gets assigned, it's going to replicate that value of zero to one to all the clients. And it's going to call this function when that happens. So inside of here is where we're going to actually set up our character to have the correct value get written to the stencil buffer. So the first thing I want to check is if we are on a dedicated server, because we actually don't want to do any of this if we are on a dedicated server, because dedicated servers don't actually render anything. So there's no reason to do anything about outlines. So we're going to say not, or sorry, not that one. We want not Boolean. So we want to know if we are not on a dedicated server. Otherwise, this does not need to happen. And then what we want to do is we want to get the first player pawn because what we want to do, what I want to say here is um, if the new pawn or the new character that's getting spawned in is on the same team as the local pawn, then we want it to be green. If it's on a different team, then we want it to be red. And if it's the same, we don't want any outline, right? Because you don't want an outline around yourself. So we can say get player pawn, and then zero is always gonna give us the first one that connects, which is always gonna be the local one. And we can say cast to third person character. And we wanna look at its team index. So we'll say get team index and or actually, before we do that, we want to check, like I said, we want to check to make sure this isn't ourselves, because if it's ourselves, we don't want to add an outline. Maybe you do, but I don't think any game really does that. So we'll say not equals, and then we'll say get ref to self, and then we'll make a branch. Okay, so this is just making sure that player is not ourselves. And then, like I said before, now we want to figure out which color to add the outline to, because if it's not ourself, we either want to make it green if it's an ally or red if it's a teammate. So we're going to take this value and say get team index. And we want to compare this to our team index. So grab our team index, say get. And then we want to check if they are equal to each other. And then from here, we're going to drag off the result and use the select node. And ultimately, we want to set the value of our mesh. We want to set the custom death stencil over our mesh because just like we did for this box where we clicked on the box and we set the custom death stencil value, we want to do the same thing but in blueprints. So if we come back here, we can drag in our mesh because that's the thing we actually want to change the color of or the outline color of. We can say set custom depth stencil value and we can hook that up to true. And then this value here, we're gonna hook up here. And now we can simply say, okay, so if they are on the same team, what value do we wanna to pass to this material, right? So remember we said ally team color is one, because if we look over here, we have a one here, and that's associated with our ally team color, and two is associated with our enemy team color. So for if they're on the same team, we wanna pass one, otherwise we wanna pass two. And then the last thing we need to do is we also want to make sure that we set that checkbox to true for the fact that we can actually render to the custom depth buffer. So we'll say set render set render custom depth to true, that up, and there we go. So essentially, just to recap, all it's doing is the server, when the game starts, or well, when the character spawns, is select assigning the team index of either zero or one. And then once that happens, that value gets replicated to all the clients. And then as long as we're not on dedicated server, we just check to make sure that the newly spawned pawn is not ourselves because we don't want to have an outline around ourselves. And then once we're sure of that, we check if the outline color of the newly spawned, or sorry, the team index of the newly spawned character is the same as our team index, and if it is, then we give the material that we just created a value of one so that it chooses the ally team color. Otherwise, we give it a value of two, so it chooses the enemy team color. And then we just make sure that the custom depth rendering is actually enabled. So now let's go back here and let's just add a couple more spawn points here. So I'm going to take this and if you hold down Alt and drag, it will duplicate it. I'm just going to duplicate it four times so that we have four different spawn points. 
And then up here, I'm gonna switch the net mode to client, and I'm gonna switch this to four. So then I'm gonna hit new editor window, so I get all new windows, and we will see what happens. Okay, so we get four screens here, and you can see each screen has two red people and one green person, and then yourself, of course, which doesn't have any outline around them. So there you go. And then for this box over here, we probably wanna change the color of it to something else, right? So I think we used three for the objective color. So we set this to three and then run it. You can see now we have outlines around our teammates and now we're using that bad blue color. Let me change it to something else. We can actually see it. Let's make it like pink. And we can see our outline color for our cube is pink. So now our objective colors are pink. And then you probably also want to make sure that it works on a listen server. So if we switch this to listen server and hit play, you should get the exact same results on all of your screens. This is the listen server down here. You can see it's the server at the top and everything's working for him as well. All right, well, that pretty much concludes the tutorial. Um, if you guys liked the video, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. It really helps out a lot. I also have a Patreon. If you guys want to support me there, that's always appreciated. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.